Hi, Lisa Gonzalez here, Chief Business Officer in the Mount Diablo Unified School District. And in this week's edition of Ask the CBO, we're going to be taking a look at what a multi-year projection is. Many of you have had questions stemming from the second interim report this past week. So here we go. What is it? First of all, it is the most important document that we have in the fiscal department. And we really use this to take a look at the fiscal health of the district over time. So in a multi-year projection, it gives some detailed estimates, estimates only of revenue and expenditures for this year and two years. Uh, it identifies short-term borrowing needs. So if it looks like we're getting too far into the red, if you will, um, it gives us an indicator as to what to take a look at. Uh, bond companies that do ratings, um, they pull this information and they take a look at it in order to decide what they wanna use um, for scores for us. Uh, it is directly tied to the school services of California Dart Board, and I'm gonna show that to you in just a second. Again, this year plus two years, it is entirely built on assumptions. So, uh, you know, we go through during the year and while we may adjust things, really when we're looking at future years, it's all based on our best guess based on the data that we have in the time. Uh, it does help us with planning, decision-making, um, and just to remember, it is not cash in the bank. It is simply a budget or a guess as to what it is that we're going to be bringing in and spending. And so everything that we use comes from this dartboard. I know you've heard me talk about the dartboard before. It comes from School Services of California, which is really the most reputable group out there, and it is universally used with school districts. And so the numbers that you see here, it goes into a, a bigger spreadsheet and permutation, if you will, um, that we use. It is all set up by school services, so we simply put the numbers of students in, and it spits out uh, numbers on the other end for us. So when it comes to an MYP, there are five things that you need to know. There's gonna be a quiz at the end. Um, so the first thing that you wanna look for is what is happening with revenue. And so what you see here, our revenue is up this year because we have uh, estimated receiving approximately $24 million worth of CARES Act funds, which is why you see that combined increase right there. And you especially see it in restricted in 2021. So you'll see where there's $100 million in 2021, but then when you jump to 21-22, it's 70 for those years out. So a lot of that is either um, some of our, a little bit of our carryover, but really it's that CARES Act funding. But what you look at is you look at the combined, both your unrestricted, no strings attached, restricted, strings attached, um, amounts of money that you estimate you're going to receive, and you look at that over time. So you can see the first arrow shows 387, and then it jumps or drops to 367, and then 362. So the first thing you want to look at is what you expect to bring in. The second thing that you look at is your expenses. So you can see approximately 380 million that we're expecting to spend this year compared to 379 compared to 380 in the following year. The next thing you look at is we call it the over under, but basically it's that math problem, addition or subtraction. What do you have left? So in this year, if you take 387 million and you subtract 380 million, you end up with an over short of 7.9 million. Fortunately, that is over, meaning we expect that there would be money left, as opposed to uh, this other side here, where you take a look at 2122, and we are again back to spending more than we are bringing in. And again, that was because of the one time CARES Act funds. Now, I want to put the disclaimer out there that there are additional, we're calling them ESSER. E-S-S-E-R funds, those are not included in here because we have not been allocated or received any of it. So you see in 21-22, 9.3 million, and then a drop to 17 million. Again, that means we are spending more than we are receiving. 
The fourth thing you look at is you look at these amounts after contributions. So what are contributions? They are amounts from the general fund that go into programs like special education or transportation, or in many school districts except for ours, food and nutrition services. So what you see is 7.9 million net as opposed to 11 million negative and 17 million negative in the third year. And the reason that, again, we look at these is because this is what tells us about our um, spending over time and what we estimate. So this is what creates deficit spending. The fifth thing we look at, an ending balance is what we approximately think may be left at the end of a year to carry over to the next year. And so again, we wanna take a look at the trends in the ending fund balance. And this is right from our second interim uh, from earlier this week. So you see approximately 56 million left at the end of this year compared to 44, compared to 26 the following year. So again, these are all of the components that we look at in, an, uh, in a multi-year projection. Hope that answered many of your questions. If you've got another question for next week, please do go ahead and send that to cbo at mdusd.org. Thank you.